In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that major upcoming snowstorm for early next week. It actually looks even more major than it did yesterday, and we have more on the way after that likely that we're going to be discussing as well today. Also, colder air really prominent here over the next 10 days. So we're going to dive deeply into that subject also. Let's just dive into things, and as we take a look at tomorrow afternoon here on Sunday, February 11th, what we see here is plenty of storminess across the deeper south regions of not only the south central states, but also the southeast. And what you'll notice is we do have this low over eastern Texas. This is what we've been talking about for days now. We see snowfall across New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. Uh, we see lots of thunderstorm activity out to the east of it. Actually, here in southeast Virginia, even today on Saturday, uh, we did have a little bit of a heavier shower, lighter, almost thunderstorm. You know, sometimes it's like a thunderstorm, but there's just no thunder. That's kind of how I describe it. The intensity of the rainfall, uh, the way it looked on radar was all thunderstorm-like. It just didn't have enough uh, convective energy to produce lightning and, and thunder. So that's why we saw a heavier shower. And oftentimes, you know, maybe that's a question that some of y'all would have is, you know, what is that type of an event? And really it's just a heavy shower just doesn't have that same energy that a thunderstorm would. Uh, let's keep going though. I want to take us towards uh, Monday here. And this is when things are really going to start to get going. We see it dropping in pressure from Eastern Texas up through Tennessee. Now a 996 millibar low pressure center somewhere in between Texas or better yet, Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, we have a little bit of cold air available up here. It's going to be diving in at the same exact time, so they will meet properly. Uh, and if there was more cold air, we would have seen a much further south snowstorm, but we really expect this one to be a pretty far northeast system, as you've probably noted if you've watched our videos over the past few days. By the time we're reaching overnight, though, this is going to be Monday into Tuesday, 12th into 13th. We do see this low somewhere near southern Maryland. And we see heavier snowfall developing all the way back through Indiana and Ohio here, southern Indiana and most of Ohio, into northern Pennsylvania, southern New York, and southern New England here. Heavy, heavy snowfall developing. Underneath, though, we do have a cold front, and this could produce some thunderstorm and heavier shower events down here, all the way from southeast Virginia into eastern North Carolina, eastern South Carolina, and uh, also eastern Georgia there. As we keep going... Uh, we can see that by the time we're reaching Tuesday afternoon, we see this low offshore. I want to backtrack just a little bit because when it's south of New England, yesterday we were talking about maybe the low 980s. Now we've seen it drop and, and basically the expected pressure is now in the upper 70s. So we've seen that drop by about four or five millibars of the expected pressure there now down to 978 as it's approaching southern New England. And we see extremely heavy snowfall again. Note the kind of vertical look. It's not directly horizontal. We're seeing it stretching from West Virginia up through Pennsylvania into New York and even New England. So definitely we still have that vertical look here on the European model. We will take a look at that GFS American model in just a moment and compare. But by the time we're reaching Tuesday afternoon, we're going to be right at the height of this storm. A 972 millibar low pressure center, which is extremely strong. And we're seeing snowfall still impacting eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, most of southern New York into most of New England, mostly the southern and eastern regions, but certainly all of New England being impacted. But basically eastern Massachusetts through southeastern New Hampshire and then the coastal regions of Maine are going to be seeing the heaviest snowfall at this point on Tuesday afternoon, February 13th. By Wednesday afternoon, it'll all be said and done. We still have colder air around, especially if you're north of, you know, or in this circle here. Uh, for areas further southeast, it's going to be a little bit more mild, but still near normal or slightly below normal temperatures, just not freezing, if that makes sense. As we take this towards Thursday, because Wednesday is overall a pretty quiet day, we do see some snowfall around for the Midwest and Great Lakes here. We see heavier snowfall for Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan and also the lower peninsula of Michigan down there seeing some snowfall as well at this point. By the time we're reaching Friday, what we see is more cold air on the way for the east. Although what I would say is we have a pretty flat northern jet stream somewhere in here. So we're seeing some colder air for the northwest and also for the north central and also the northeast. Which if you've watched our videos for a long time now, you would note that it's pretty rare to see all corners of the nation basically in the northern half seeing cold temperatures. But that's what we're seeing. 
Uh, we're seeing a lot of high pressure. I don't know why I just got so big. Uh, let me shrink that down for a second here so we can actually see what's going on. Uh, we see a lot of high pressure and warmth pushing northward for the southwest, the south central with this storm here as well, and then also the southeast. So there's just this equal push from the north and south across the board from the western states through the central and even into the eastern states here. This is kind of the look here. I think the key feature here is going to be this southern storm. I want to see how this interacts with the cold. Again, I kind of told you guys yesterday, I usually watch this stuff with you guys and don't dive too deeply into it before I make the video. So we're kind of unveiling this together. There's also a northern piece of energy over the Rockies here. And if this meets up uh, with this southern piece, obviously we could get some very interesting interaction there in an even more major storm. So let's see what happens. And sure enough, I mean, it really doesn't meet up with it. So scratch that idea. And really what happens is we have the cold up here. We have the storminess down here, but you see they don't overlap. Uh, the storm and the cold kind of stay separated. And we maybe get a tiny bit of mixing or lighter snowfall happening in Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, or North Carolina, or maybe all four. Uh, but it would be a lighter snowfall event if this is the look. Uh, we do mix over to more and more snowfall there. I guess we do get a little bit of a heavier area in Virginia at some point with this storm, but really it has more potential than what we just looked at. I think that this could turn into something much bigger. And then we get a very interesting kind of pattern where we have this massive trough, especially over the central states where this is extremely deep cold. And then we have storms really riding straight northward along this. And what happens is we get this heavier snowfall for portions of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Michigan, and even Wisconsin. Keep in mind, though, I mean, storms like this do struggle with mixing issues, especially this west to east kind of snowfall rainfall line. Definitely, this could be a messy storm. Uh, and eventually, it gets even messier as it really just transitions into a full coast coastal storm here uh, where we get snowfall in this corridor. By the time we're taking a look at Tuesday on the 20th, we do have a secondary low up here is a 996 over Canada and then a 985 up there uh, offshore of the northeast. And what we get is a pretty wide stretching snowstorm for Canada and the northeastern states as well as portions of the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes and Mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, keep in mind, this is very far out, so we're going to want to take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, anything a model is showing is technically possible and we want to consider this a possibility. But I mean, what we're left with here on the 20th is a lot of warmth and again, high pressure here indicating a positive PNA for the southwest. And this is causing all of this cold air to slip into the eastern states as we're seeing here. Uh, ideally, what you'd be seeing is warmth all the way along that western coast. And if we saw warmth even up there, you would see an even deeper dive of this cold air in the east. It's coming in a little bit more slanted. We still get enough cold air here, but definitely it would have been much more if it was a straight north to south look like this. That's the most ideal positive PNA pattern you can look for. Jetstream doing something like this, as opposed to doing something more like this. This is much more of what we're getting. The interesting thing is you could get storms riding along this and kind of coming inland, which does create some pretty massive snowstorms across the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Sometimes it's a pretty rare pattern, uh, but we'll have to watch and see. Now the GFS model, as we move forward, I just want to take us to this upcoming storm and everything almost looks identical, even down to the vertical look. Uh, where we have a much less horizontal look here on the GFS model, and it's kind of coming in line with what the European model was showing. So once again, the European model beating out that GFS model. But keep in mind, we have a 984 here south of New England. Remember, the European model showed a 978. So we're looking at a storm that's about 6 millibars weaker here on this GFS model. But regardless of that, we still get a very heavy snowfall event from Ohio into Pennsylvania, New York, and southern New England here by this point. And even by Tuesday afternoon, let's see if it looks similar to that uh, European model. It does, but it's still about 6 millibars weaker uh, at a 978 millibar storm. Again, eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, southern New York, and southern New England seeing that heavy, heavy snowfall are still by uh, Tuesday afternoon there. So... Pretty good agreement, just the intensity is a little bit off, but location is almost identical, as you could probably note. The tilt has all come into line, so we have great agreement for a storm that's about three days out. Uh, let's keep moving on, and what we see is that southern piece of energy, and it does interact here. Uh, keep in mind, remember, the, GF, or the European model had this, and it also had this, but what happened is that this one kind of fizzled out, and then we saw this system just slide directly to the east, and they didn't get that interaction in there. Uh, but what we're going to see here on the GFS model is that this piece of energy kind of moves more northward. This one combines with it. And then we obviously have the cold air here over the northeast. So we get a big old storm here potentially. So let's watch it play out. Again, this is by Saturday on the 17th. 
This is by uh, Sunday on the 18th, and what we get is a massive coastal system. 990 millibar low pressure center, some pretty cold air below freezing at least here for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, and what we get is another heavy coastal storm system uh, they're riding up all the way along the coast. We even get another one. This one's a little bit further northward and not as organized, but we do get snowfall here for the northeast again for Wednesday on the 21st. And then as we keep going, we get another even further north system. And then it looks like uh, we have another system moving through. And finally, around the 26th, we return to a cold in the west pattern, warm in the east pattern. Uh, so definitely that would still be very long lived. That's about 15 days from now until we see this model switch us to a cold in the West, warm in the East pattern, but still you want to take this with a grain of salt. I do think that, you know, sometime between the 20th and, uh, the 30 or not the 30th, the 28th of February, of course, I, I think that at some point between those times, we will see a switch back to cold in the West, warm in the East, just because these patterns, they can't last forever. So to be realistic, you know, I expect 10 to 15 days from now, we will see an end of that of course, uh, but still uh, take this with a grain of salt as sometimes these models get these pattern changes a little bit off. Usually they'll end up happening if a model or if all the models are suggesting it, but sometimes the timing can be off as we've probably all noticed this year. Uh, we can see that there's still quite a bit of precipitation expected out west, but I think the biggest thing here is this southeast into the northeast uh, heavy, heavy precipitation. It's all because of this storm flow coming through here pretty consistently. Total snowfall through the entire model run. We're going to see a ton out west as we've seen all winter long, of course. Even the Midwest and Ohio Valley and Great Lakes getting a lot here. And then, of course, the Mid-Atlantic up through the northeast. What I want to do is I want to zoom into the northeast. And now that we're seeing multiple snowstorms pop up, what I want to do is I want to rewind this to where we just get our first snowstorm. So this is going to be the European model's forecast for this upcoming Monday-Tuesday system. And what we see is a bullseye of about 15 to 20 inches stretching all the way from north central Pennsylvania through southern New York and into southern New England there, even extending into what I would call central New England, uh, with the heaviest being just to the north of Boston, which is a classic area to see the heaviest snowstorm in a coastal system like this. These hilly regions to the west and north of Boston always tend to really, really cash in on snowfall. This particular model is calling for just about uh, two feet at 24.4 inches of snowfall somewhere in here, uh, right there. Definitely. I think that's a little bit high, but certainly this model, this, this storm better yet has great potential to bring a foot plus of snowfall, maybe even pushing towards 20 inches with how intense that low pressure system is going to be. Now the GFS model, uh, what we're going to do, well, actually better yet after we get the second system, I mean, we get left with even further amount of snowfall. I did want to show you guys that. Uh, and as we look at the GFS model, everything's the same here. I do want to zoom into the northeast again for this particular snowstorm that we're taking a look at in a couple days here. Let's rewind it. And what we get now, remember the GFS model was the heavier model with the snowfall over the past few days. Now it's the lighter model, uh, still showing about a foot to maybe 15 inches, but it's not giving in those 20 plus inch amounts here. Uh, and the bullseye, you know, even though I said this model was coming in more vertically, I mean, the bullseye is still very, very horizontal compared to this uh, European model right here. Although that does look pretty on point here. Uh, you can tell that the tilt is a little bit different here on the European model as opposed to the GFS model, but still it's getting closer and closer. The bullseye is still that central, uh, north central Pennsylvania area into southern New York and southern New England. We get a little bit less here on this northern extent here on the GFS model as opposed to the European model. So I think that's definitely a finer detail that we need to unfold here. But again, the pinks are still indicating 10 to 20 inches, and we're likely seeing uh, a lot closer to 10 to 15 for most of these areas. The heaviest area on this model extends into the Catskills and back through northeast Pennsylvania at about 15 to maybe 18 inches, call it. So still a heavier snowfall event here. I mean, they're both gargantuan with the snowfall amounts. The European model just coming in about five inches heavier uh, than the GFS model does, which makes sense because the European model, again, has that low pressure system a lot. Uh, the, the GFS model is a lot weaker with it. The European model is a lot stronger with it. So it makes sense why the snowfall reflects that. Let's take a look at the temperature pattern. Again, we're still in a warmer pattern. It was like it was like 73 here in Virginia today. Super nice. Uh, but colder temperatures are on the way. Again, Tuesday into Wednesday. I mean, we see severe cold moving into the east, of course. Still some out west, too. So we do have a negative PNA with some cold air moving into the northeast. But if we had a positive PNA, you would likely be seeing this cold air really dive southward. 
uh, that's kind of the difference there. But what we get for the 16th and on is a major cold blast moving eastward, uh, and it continues at least through the 20th here, and we have some milder temperatures from the northwest through the southwest and even the south central states, which is going to help support this cold air diving through the north central and into the northeast and even southeast states here. Uh, as we keep going, we see this kind of continues actually through the long range on this model, even showing uh, semi-cold temperatures, although again, we have some cold out west indicative of a negative PNA, uh, but we still have some colder temperatures in the east as well by time of reaching the 25th. So again, sometime between the 20th and the end of February, I do expect this cold pattern to somewhat come to an end, or at least there to be some relief from it as they typically only last about a week or two. Uh, so I definitely expect a flip at some point from it, but these models are indicating that this could still be around by the 25th timeframe, about 15 days from now, which is certainly very, very interesting. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We will, we will unfold the upcoming pat pattern together daily as we do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.